We're back with another episode. We're back with another episode of Barrett's Says. And how you guys doing this week? Well, it's Monday, start of the week. I hope you guys had a good weekend. I had a pretty good weekend. My friends came over. I cooked some food. We played some games. I had a good weekend. Definitely, definitely. Got some sleep, watching TV, some drinks. Speaking of TV, I am so here for all these black television shows coming on Netflix. Like, it's so nostalgic and it's just like a good time killer. Like, it literally makes the days go faster. A lot of these, like, black shows have so many seasons, like eight seasons, seven seasons. And by the, by the time you finish watching the whole season, the day is over, honey, or even half the season. Like, I know girlfriends... They got like 21 episodes in one season, child. Mm -mm. And you know what I love to... Let me not make this like a TV show podcast episode. But you know what I love so much as well about, um, you know, TV in the 90s. What would we consider that? Like, yeah, you know, 90s, 2000s. That it was so simplistic. And when I say that, like... I like TV in general. I don't really care. Like for instance, like with Sister Sister, like I was watching. I haven't even finished the um, Sister Sister like the whole series, but like with Sister Sister, like in the beginning, like in the late '90s, the way they would do episodes, each episode had a theme. You know what I'm saying? Like each episode, like the show wasn't based off of a plot. Like you know how like now we watch TV. This episode leads into this episode, and this episode, and this episode, and this episode. Like, they all travel into each other. Like, I felt like back in the 90s, the shows just had a theme. Like, this episode, today, Tamara is going to meet her first boy crush. And then the next episode, she's going to get her driver's license. And then the next episode, like, the shows were, now shows are so plot driven and I love a plot driven show because it gets me grabbed in and I get that's why they do that so that they can keep the viewership up right if you leave me on a cliffhanger I'm going to want to come back next week and watch the show but I just love that simplicity like when I was watching Sister Sister and even with Girlfriends at one point it was like that too it wasn't the show wasn't cohesive it was just this episode this is gonna happen this episode this is gonna happen I just thought it was so cute and also, even after it became more plot-driven, like, these, these black shows became more plot-driven, plot it was still simplistic. Like, that's what I really love, you know. Like, I feel like, you know, I watch Power. Power is well-written. I love to see, that's why I like a well-written show. I think that show is extremely well-written. It keeps not getting Emmy nods because, you know, it's affiliated with 50 Cent. And I think because he's crazy. And I think it's a little racism there, too. A little drip, a little racism. But, um, you know, Power is very well written. It takes a lot of attention and focus. I think, you know, it takes a lot of, like, attention and focus and, like, oh, my God, is this going to happen? This going to happen? This going to happen? And even, like, Insecure. No shade to um, Insecure because I love Insecure. You hear me? Love Insecure HBO. But even, like, sometimes on Insecure, keep it a fucking buck. It's certain episodes, and I think maybe because they got 30 minutes, but still. Some episodes, I don't know what the fuck that episode meant. Y'all know what the fuck I'm talking about. Like, I feel like that show, like, Insecure is such a creatively driven show. Like, not creative. What's, it is creative, but, um, like, I feel like they also pay attention to the aesthetics of the show and how it looks and the scoring and the music and the, like, everything. Y'all get what I'm saying? Like, especially this season, they really um, wasn't fucking around with the creative control. Like, I remember they was doing the blue and the red thing. And, the like, they was playing with colors in each scene and the way scenes looked. And everything was so artistic this season. The, well, the last season that had just passed or whatever the case may be. But I'll be honest. It's sometimes I watch an episode of Insecure and I have to watch it two more times because the show is so... I, I don't get, I feel like, I'll watch the episode and be like, I feel like this episode had meaning, and I don't know what the meaning of it is. Like, I'm telling you, like, I could be honest and say that, like, 
And sometimes I don't want to do that. You know, it's good though. I like a good, you know, brain cruncher. But I also love a good simplicity. Like, you feel me? Like, I've been watching Girlfriends. I never really watched Girlfriends. My mother would watch it. So I would, like, be there. But I wasn't, like, fully paying attention. But, and I, so sometimes I remember, like, little things of the show. Um, but I just feel like the simplicity of the show is so beautiful. Like, it's, it's good to just watch simplistic ass TV. And that's not no disrespect to the writing. The writing is amazing. Like, dead ass. Like, I'd be like, oh my God, this is so funny. Like, all the jokes that Tony says or stuff like that. Or even on, you know, like, Sister, Sister. You know, even um, I watch on Disney Plus, Plus, Proud Family. And I'm like, wow, this show touched on so many topics. Like, racism and just so many topics that I'm like, wow. You know what I'm saying? Um, I was watching Smart Guy. I'm, I'm a black TV connoisseur at this point, honey. <laughs> Uh, one of the shows that's out today, I think Blackish is not um, is not plot driven. It's very each episode has a meaning, and I think that's probably why I I like that show. Um, but yeah, I was just thinking that like I could just sit down, watch the show, pay attention, and I know what happened, what's going on, and what we doing. But um, yeah, this is not a, a um. What is it? TV podcast. <laughs> I definitely could talk about black TV all day. Definitely. You never know. Maybe next season. But. Yes. And I'm ready to watch the podcast. So yeah. Good on Netflix. If you don't have a Netflix account. Get somebody account. Bitch. Buy one. Start watching Girlfriends. Start watching Sister Sister is out now. The Parkers is, is out. They're going to have one-on-one, -on -one, I think, half and half or something. I'm ready for the Jamie Foxx show, and I was excited about the Parkers, too. But, anyway, what are we talking about today? Today, remember last week I was saying how um I wanted to lighten the mood, so I'm really going to lighten it. Because today we are talking about the different types of men and how to deal with them. Yes, and and don't be alarmed because next week we will be talking about the different type of woman. But uh, yeah, we gonna lighten the mood. So what what brought me to this this episode? I feel like you know it could be helpful because I feel like you know how they say sometimes you check the same guy with just a different pair of shoes on and things like that. And I just think it's funny to talk about and, you know, address. And maybe you may be dating somebody and you may not notice that they have these characteristics and they act this way or they behave this way. Or maybe you do date somebody who acts this way and behaves this way. You love them to death and that's fine and you want to relate. This episode, we do not have an expand your mind because basically I'm just spew out different types of men and you know tell you how to deal with them bitch all right so the first guy which is pissing me off i don't know why i made this the first guy is the gangster bitch first of all if you my age i think from the only time you could think a thug, a thug a gangster is from age 18 to 22 i was gonna say when you're young but i'm not trying to advocate that on this podcast episode but that's some young girl shit that ass just dating a thug, dating a gangster. If you a gangster <laughs> and you watching, I'm sorry. I, I have to be honest with the viewership. Like, y'all should not be dating no motherfucking gangster bitch after the age of 22. Like, it's, it's like, you have to stop. Are you ready to ride a dog? Are you ready to get arrested, bitch? You're going to jail if you're dating a gangster. You're going to fucking jail. I just feel like... What I like about, like, against the dude, I feel like they mad motivational. Because <laughs> I think this somebody who was, like, hood gangster. And I just feel like when I would come to him and complain about stuff, he would just ramp me up. Like, dumb bitches hating on you at your job. Don't let these bitches get you tight at your job. They hating on you. They intimidated by you. Like, ah, oh, guys, they're intimidated by me. They're jealous of me. They're jealous. <laughs> They be dead mad motivational because you know how hood people they just they live off the streets. They don't give a fuck about anything else. And with the streets, you have to be motivated. You have to be determined. 
And I just feel like <laughs> they just have this certain like type of energy. Like to be hood and be gangster, you really do need to have I would feel a lot of what's the the word and it's such a simplistic word too. Confidence. Because at the end of the day you gotta seem tough. Uh, unless niggas going, you know, violate you, treat you like you, you a punk, and they gonna beat you up. So they have so much confidence, and so sometimes some of them are so fearless that they're there to help you. They could build you up. They could, they're, they, they can help you feel a little more confident because they don't understand certain things, and you know, like if I was to bring up something like somebody said this and did this today to me you should have punched that motherfucker and i'm just like yes i should have i love that like because you know that somebody who is not a thug or gangster if you go tell your friends some shit that happened at work they not they might say some of your friends might say you should punch that bitch on her face but they don't mean it with sincerity they're not saying it with sincerity they're saying it with um a little humor and upsetness for you. You know what I'm saying? So that's one thing I love about a thug or a gangster. Like, you know, that's one of the pros. Definitely a con is bitch, you can get arrested, you can get fucking shot. It's bitches that get shot every day by accident because they fuck with some thug nigga. Um, are gangsters good? I hear mixed reviews like with the gangsters in bed. Like, I hear like some of them good, some of them bad. Like, they just be like, you know, on a rabbit shit. Like, they, just, they got bigger issues to deal with, like, real talk. So, I can't really speak on that. <laughs> and I won't. Um, I think one of the cons, definitely the con is that they're, they're hood, you know. What they say with gangsters is, like, it's only two ways out, in jail or dead. And, and that's a, you, you living on a crazy edge. You living on the edge, bitch. Like, you just dating somebody who on the edge. Like, y'all can go outside and some shit might pop off. Like, you living on the edge. You checking your shoulder. Like, uh-uh. Like, I used to feel like that. Like, ooh. Or, like, it's just like, ugh. Like, what's going to happen when we step outside? You feel protected, though, too. Because I know, like, if you out or, you you know, something happened, you feel like you could call him and maybe he might be somebody ass for you or whatever. Like, you feel protected when you with him, but you also feel scared when you with him because you feel like, this motherfucker gangster, anything could pop off, but this motherfucker gangster, and he ain't gonna let shit happen to me. It's like a two different type of spectrum. But I mean, for me, you know, starving gangster, starving thugs, I don't recommend dating no motherfucker like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, we gotta get it together, gangsters and thugs. We can't do that. And you know, a lot of times they don't have a true ambition. They believe they have an ambition, like, but running in the streets is not a good steady life to live. And we know that. And you know that's true. Like, it's really not the life that you want to live. Like, it's not. It's not a healthy life. So, it is what it is. Love you gangsters and thugs, you know. But I got to keep it 100. You feel me? The, the next type of dude is the super friendly. Now, when I say super friendly... All right, some of y'all like, he's not friendly, he's flirty. I mean, that dude that you dating, and he always just, like, relax, my nigga, like, relax. I remember I was talking to somebody like that, and he was just always being friendly. Like, stop. Like, bring it down a bit. You know what I'm saying? Like, those people who, like, they so personable. So, when they get around other people, but with girls, I can't speak... Well, we'll talk about that next week. With girls, when your man is super friendly, the girl thinks that he's flirting. You get what I'm saying? Like, he's flirting with you. Like, no, my nigga's just friendly, and I'm trying to fix that every day. You get what I'm saying? Like, he just always goofing around, playing around, always want to talk, always want to chat. He is very social. But you need to bring it down. Because girls be doing that like, oh, yeah, I saw, like, Tyrone the other day and you know like he was just talking to me and like he's mad funny like <laughs> like 
Like, stop. Stop. You, you're being mad friendly. Like, you're mad extra. You're mad social. Like, stop. Relax. Like, I understand that. Like, me, I'm very social, but I have my boundaries. Like, when I get around people. It's some du dudes don't understand boundaries when they're, when they're friendly and they're chatty and they like to talk and they like to have conversation. They dead ass don't understand it at all. Like, they don't have a real concept of calming down. So... I don't know if you ever did like the super friendly dude, the dude that's mad social, like he could just talk or or they feel like when they are somewhere they have to be respectful. You of course you have to be respectful. I don't like how to, I'm saying that, but they have to be not only respectful but make that person feel comfortable in a sense. So they feel like okay, let's say I don't freaking know. You go somewhere and. You're like, this is my, my, um, my aunt. Not saying I'm mad if they get super funny with my aunt. Some, some girls is like that. Like, I don't want you funny my aunt, my mom, my cousin, my grandma, because I feel like you want to try to date them. <laughs> That's a crazy person. Um, let's say, you know, they just meet your aunt. They want to make her feel comfortable. So they'd be a mad chatty, mad extra. And then there's some dudes who's really dead not like that. They're just like, hey, hi, my name is da 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 da. You know, yeah, ha huh, ha. Huh. This is the type of dude that he'll be like, hey, hi. I'm filling your shirt. And she be like, oh, thank you, thank you. I got this from Macy's. Macy's is where it's at. They be having a deal. They be having a coupon. All right, Macy's auntie. Like, you know what I'm talking about. Like, they just be dragging it, like, to the fullest extent. Like, and then they be having conversations with them. But they be doing that shit with your friends. They be doing that shit with people outside. Like, I, me personally, I can't do the super friendly. I can't. Like, I... I am a Scorpio. Scorpios are known for having a jealous trait. I have traits of jealousy. I will be very, I will admit to that openly. So I'm not interested in no super friendly motherfucker. Like if you want to be extra funny, bitch, go get a fucking friend. And it ain't me. <laughs> next, next nigga, next. The liar. And then I put in parentheses, he's in a relationship. That's not necessarily true. Okay, because you can be, I feel like you could be a liar and not even be in a relationship. You could just be the type that just be going on dates. Like, because you could be single. And let's say you single and you dating me. Like, well, not single. I take that back. Let's say you're in a relationship with me. Right? But you still going on dates with other girls. You're not having sex with them. You're just going on dates and canoodling with other bitches. Type shit. So, to me, that's being a liar if you're not telling me about it. So, liars, that's that's a... Are there any pros to dating a motherfucking liar? You know, this is a toxic pro. The good... The toxic pro of dating a liar is that... He cares about you so much, he doesn't want to hurt you even though he's hurting you. And when I say a lie, I mean the liars that be lying. Like, they will lie just so you can have a smile on your motherfucking face. And you leave them alone and you stop arguing. And, and that's a toxic pro. Okay? That is, we don't like liars. We like motherfuckers that keep it real. But they just don't like to upset people. They don't like to upset you. You they mean or whatever. Oh, you may not be they mean. They don't want to upset you. They want to keep a smile on your face. They lie, bitch. Till the fucking meat fall off the bones, bitch. They are a liar. A liar, a liar, a liar. Like, I think it's a toxic pro that they really just... It's a, it's a beauty in... And this is toxic, but it's a beauty in not wanting to upset people. Let's be honest. Like, it's a beauty in... Because you could real life be in a relationship with somebody, right? And be cheating and be doing shit you're not supposed to be doing and doing fuck shit. And being mad sloppy with it and keeping it 100 with your partner. Like, all are getting caught up. This When I say a lie, it's the type of person that get caught up and be like... That's not even my girl. You sound dumb type. That type of liar that just keep going and going and going. It's a type of beauty in somebody who's just like, nah, I'm not, I, I'm not going to hurt her feelings today. And then there's some people that just be like, yeah, I fucked up. I'm fucking with her. Uh, 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 looking mad dumb. So it's just like, 
you got to be honest, as toxic as it is, it's the beauty in somebody who would just really be like, I'm going to just lie this shit to the bone because I love this girl. And <laughs> I just love them. I don't want no smoke. I just want us to have a happy home, even though I'm out doing dumb shit. Like I said, it's a toxic pro. And it's something in that spirit of that person that speaks volumes. Like, I might be a liar, and I promise you, I'm not the lion type. Because this sounds like some shit a toxic motherfucker would really say. But it's true, but it's toxic. And it's it's a thing. You know, it's, it's a beauty in that, in some ways, I feel like. It really is a true beauty in just being able to be like, you know, I'm not, I'm going out with my homeboys. When you really going out with the next bitch. Because, uh, keep it 100, some niggas don't have to do that. They uh, they might not even give you a fake story. Okay, some niggas be like, I'm going out. He gonna lie. He gonna be like, I'm going to my friend's house. Some shit happened and he need me to fix his car. I'm like, yes, make a story. Go in depth. Do you. Make your initiative to be a lying ass, sheen ass motherfucker. Yes. Beautiful. Like, you, you, gotta, you gotta respect that. Like, you have to. Toxically. It's not right. Me, personally, I wouldn't date a liar. Um, who would? Um, are, when I say a liar, are they the good liars? I feel like men aren't the best liars, let's be honest. Um, you know, I never met a girl that met a good one. You know. Uh... You just never know pro in dating a lying ass nigga like a liar ugh, ugh. That, that type of relationship is exhausting like and then you be like and then you know you get mad like then keep it a buck with me just say you cheating and they just be like but I'm not they're sick they're crazy we're not dealing with that dunzo dunzo oh my motherfucking god child this next guy this next guy, though, we've met him because there were a lot of them, unfortunately. The motherfucking broke guy, the broke bitch. That was my first episode talking about not taking care of men on Brit Says the podcast, okay? That was what my first episode was about. <laughs> broke men, you know, America is hard. America is, is, is a scary place. And, um... You still have to get a job. And broke men, I heard, they're good, you know, they have good penis. <laughs> that that's what the streets are saying. Like the streets say that. Like broke niggas, they 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 be broke and just giving it up different, you know. So that's definitely a pro. Um uh, broke men too. Some of them, this is the thing. This is the thing. I feel like with broke guys, they really have, like, good personalities. They be a good guy. Like, no exaggeration. Their real life only flaw is that they broke and they can't keep a job. And that and, and that's a big flaw. That's a big-ass flaw, bitch. They have usually exude good personalities. Great not fashionable because they can't afford it and it's just like where where did you come from they usually have like one to two maybe one to five good outfits one to five because that's how they they lure you in they have to look like they have it together but they don't and you know they're they're giving me liar vibes as well because bitch you're putting on nice clothes and you're broke and i don't like that but um yeah, the broke guy. They're dateable too because so many girls like I have dated a broke nigga. Like it's just like wow. After a certain while, like I feel like let's like I was gonna say I was gonna say like by forty, you shouldn't date a broke guy at all. But you need to know your broke man because sometimes somebody might be broke, but they're not a broke ass man. Like. 
they might be the type of dude that's broke in that moment, but they're looking for a job. So we need to know how to differentiate that. Yeah, some people get laid off. Some people lose their jobs. Some people quit. Some people get fired. But they're looking for a job. They're looking to build themselves. Maybe they're a rapper. Like, let's not sleep on the rappers or whatever. And they want to be basketball players or whatever the fuck they want to do. Um, they're building a business. That's different to me. They're still t technically broke, but I'm talking about the broke dude that dead ass be broke. You've been dating this one for three years. If you broke for three years, three, 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 three. Like, come on. You know what I'm saying? And I'm saying broke because I know some of us like, I'm broke, bitch. I feel like I'm broke, but I ain't broke, broke. You know what I'm saying? Like, Broke is really when you ain't never got no motherfucking money. Like, they always penny pinching. Like, they don't got it. They don't got no job. They always losing their job. They be at a job for three months, then they quit. Like, that's a broke person. Because some of y'all be ODing. Like, some of y'all rich hostage bitches, like, oh my God, he's broke. And he, like, he really has a job. Like, but everybody has, you know, is broke subjective? Is it? It probably is. Being broke is probably subjective because somebody could look at you or me and, you know, maybe not feel like we're broke, right? I feel like if I'm, you know, want to go out to eat and I feel like that's not a smart decision, then I feel like I broke, <laughs> you know. So maybe being broke is subjective, you know. It's the difference between being broke and being cheap as well. That needs to be differentiated. Because sometimes people correlate broke with cheap. And I think those are two different things. Me personally, I don't mind a cheap motherfucker. I really don't because I'm cheap. But I, even if sometimes I'm a little extra. But I really love a cheap ass person who just saves their coin. Who respects the value of money. Who could tell you, like, because sometimes you need that, like, why are you buying that shit? Like, like, sometimes you need that because not everything we need or we should buy. But, um, and that could be a pro of dating maybe a broke person too, right? Because when you dating somebody broke, you know that you got to save up. You got to be careful. You might look at him and be like, I can't end up that way. So that's definitely a pro. Like, you look at your man like... Oh, he is so broke. I cannot be like this. I can't. I can't end up like this. Like, you can look at him and just be like, ugh. Or you can look at him and you just want to save your money. So, a broke person pro is that he can really motivate you into just saving your money. Being financially aware. <laughs> Getting a job. Getting a, uh, get a promotion. You be looking at his ass. And you just like, I can't end up this way. <laughs> I have to save my money because this nigga just he keep asking me for ten dollars. I gotta make sure I got money saved up because he's dreading my bank account. <laughs> Yo, y'all better y'all better stop. Y'all better stop. Y'all better stay away from these broke ass niggas because I feel like is there? A, I feel like I said if he broke but he ambitious, he's dateable. Period. That's straight across the board. But if he just broke and he always broke, bitch. Do you want to deal with that? Do you want to deal with that? Answer that question. Nobody wants to deal with that. All right, the next guy is, I put the hot guy. <laughs> that was like, come on now. But basically I'm saying the sexy dude, that dude, the pretty boy, like, the, that nigga that looks dumb good. Every girl wants him. Everybody's on his fucking heels. Look, look, listen here. I mean, the pro, obviously, is that he looks good as fuck. And that's just that on that. But, I mean, it definitely comes to his cons. Mad girls is on his line. You usually getting into mad drama. You checking his DM. Bitches is in his DMs. Now you want to fight every girl in the book. It's just, like, a lot. It's a lot. Um, they usually messy, too. They don't really know what they want to do. They don't know if they want to settle down. A lot of these pretty boys too, low key, high key, they be having like um mad insecurities. Keep it a buck, like the ones that be like that's like overly sexy. They 
they're always so insecure and so extra. And like, I don't like no, and sometimes the overly sexy ones too, they have money problems in a way where they spend too much, unlike the broke guy, he's not spending anything. The sexy guy, he has to keep up with his appearance. He's going to the gym, he's buying expensive sneakers, he's buying expensive clothes, he's constantly getting a haircut. Like he's just, he's more high maintenance than me. And it's just like, stop. Bring it down. Who are you showing out for? For me? Thank you. <laughs> but, I mean, I feel like that would probably be, like, the only con is just, like, mad girls be on his heels. You you, you start getting insecure because you know, like, damn, when he leaves the street, some girl's going to look at him. Some girl's going to be flirting with him. And when I'm not around him, it's just, like, I feel like he's cheating on me or he's just got another girl number. You know, there's so many beautiful people out here that why would he stay with me? You start getting super duper insecure and just like it just fucks with your head like all freaking day. Like, like all day. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Like, I'm trying to think. That's why me, I don't really like And some of them some of them they're not really good conversationists they're so focused on their looks they don't even watch tv like that they can't get into politics because they're trying to figure out what's the latest fashions like they're trying to figure out what's the new nutritional diet that i can take to maintain my body like they don't really have dope personalities sometimes like the overly sexy guy sometimes you can meet a guy but they don't know that they mad sexy you ever met those guys that look mad good and they don't know it so they be mad funny they be mad cool because they don't really take themselves too seriously i'm not talking about one of those but a lot of times they don't really got that much personality they just look good. Sometimes they should be small. I'm just keeping it a bug. Sometimes niggas be overcompensating with their looks for other things. Other other areas. Um I don't know. I just feel like the the, the sexy guy, he he's he doesn't give much trouble. He just gives a lot of anxiety. He could be dateable. It's up to you. Like maybe if you feel like you are overly high maintenance and sexy ass bitch. You could date an overly high maintenance sexy ass dude, but two overly sexy ass high maintenance ass people that sound ridiculous and redundant and I don't know. I don't if that's what y'all into, bitch. I don't know. He, I mean, it's nothing really wrong with the hot guy, but eh, eh. Like you could get you a medium and and have more, you know, just coming your way but personality and stuff for the most part and obviously looks are subjective somebody could look at this person and think they're like Ugh. and then you can look at this person and think they're like "Ooh, you know what i'm saying like we all view everybody differently um oh my god the super emotional even though i was talking about emotionless people top of the season but it's some guys that are so emotional and so um, they just show it all. Um, they'll cry in front of you. Like, and you, you didn't even know them that long. And they're, they're just emotional. Like, <laughs> um, I'm just trying to think, like, what's a pro? A pro with dating an emotional person is that they're in tune with their emotions. I think it's beautiful to be in tune with your emotions, especially be a dude. But sometimes I feel like when men, they be dragging it like when they emotional. Well, well, women dragging when we get emotional, right? Technically. Um, it depends with me. Like, if if you dragging it, because it, it's dudes that really just, they just off the Richter. Like, that's super emotional. They just start crying. They're very loud and run bunches. And y'all get into argument. Like, they be punching holes in the wall and shit. Like, stop. Like, for real. Like, stop. Like, you're doing the most. Like, we just arguing. <laughs> like, I said, we're just arguing. And you're punching the wall. And you're getting upset. Like, you know those men, they come home like, they disrespect me. Ah! Like, stop. You're, you're being a lot. You're being a lot. Like, you need help. You need therapy. Um, 
it's good to be in touch with your emotions like we talked about top of the season if you're super emotional like like i said you constantly doing that shit that's toxic i feel like i don't know i mean technically if you can handle somebody being emotional because some people like like i don't do people like that like they're just so in touch like if you punch your holes in my fucking wall and i gotta get it fixed like i'm not interested in that and just the crying and all this those could low-key be considered as temper tantrums i mean because i'm thinking like it's nothing wrong with that but at the same time it's like I don't know. How y'all feel about that? I don't know. I, Cause I feel like if he's just emotional, but he's not being overly emotional with you, like putting his hands on you or just, you know, it's technically there's nothing wrong with that. Some people express their emotions differently, but I think, I think sometimes you could be a bit overzealous. I think sometimes you could really, it could be too much. It could be overbearing. Is it break up or boo though? Like I need to break up with you. I don't know. I never dated somebody like that. I'm gonna be honest. I don't know if somebody who's really super emotional, you should break up with that person. Am I toxic? I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know how to put that, that man up on this list. Okay. Oh God. The money team guy, he gets money. Period. We're done talking about broke niggas. We're done talking about emotional niggas. We're done talking about lies. We're talking about the money team niggas. Boom. We're talking about the motherfuckers. And when I say money team, I mean money. Basically, your rich dudes, the dudes that's flying you out, the dudes that these Instagram hoes is getting. You feel me? Um, oh, boy, oh, boy. The thing with the money team dudes, the dudes who really get money and they have money is to get money for the most part, especially if you're, you know, younger, you can't give me but so much time. A lot of the times... Dudes with money, they just give you money. They can't give you time. They can't f help you with your emotions. They can't give you everything else. All they could do is throw Birkin bags at you and Louboutins and just clothes and Fendi and Chanel. And it's just like, are these material things filling the spot of love for me? And it might not. Like, he might only take you out on a date once a month because he's just busy making money. He doesn't have that type of time, you know. You might start having kids with him and he's not there for the kids that much because he's focusing on his business. He's getting money. You know what I'm saying? And um, that's up to you. I know for me personally, I want somebody that could be around me often. But I do know how it feels to have somebody who works a lot. To, you know, make sure the house is good. Make sure there's food in the fridge. And make sure that I look good. And things like that. So. Money team niggas. I don't know. They, they're usually cool. They're, they, they have a tendency to cheat. So I've heard in the streets. And that's why, you know, they, they feel they could do it because. And the thing is, money could, um. To them solidify you like hold you back which is true right if you you know put all your reliance into a guy with money now he pays all the bills he's providing food putting coat he's basically your source of income he feels like he could do whatever he wants he could go out and cheat he knows you're not gonna leave because you can't leave because you don't have a job and and you can't live the way you want to live without him technically you and your kids or you just you alone. So the money guy, he sometimes uses the money and the material things to keep you lured in. Vice versa, just using love and respect and and just everything of him to keep you in. He's using money. So that could be a downfall of the money too, guy. Yeah, we love money. We love material things. But what do we love more? Do you want love or do you want material things material things you can't take that shit with you to the grave at the end of the day um it's up to you what do you what do you prefer more you know 
Money Team Guy is dope. It's good, you know, if you, you into, you know, looks and appearances and social media. You know. Um, you know you good. You ain't got to worry about money. Because I ain't going to front. Worrying about money can be a lot. Worrying about money is a lot. It really can be a lot. So, I don't know. It's, it's a lot of pros and cons. Money is a big pro. You can't front. Money don't grow, grow on trees. So, needing money is a big thing. But money isn't equivalent to happiness. But it's important. You know. Ain't shit in life free. So, some people may look at that. That's pretty much a big pro for a guy to have. But then his cons, he has to maintain that money and keep that money in. It's just a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot to think about. But I definitely named some pros and cons with the money team guy. Mixy guy stays at all the events, stays in the loop. Child. I can't date nobody that's fucking mixy. Period. <laughs> like, I could be friends with a mixy guy, but to date one, absolutely not. I feel like they just too much in the scene. They got mad friends, girls and guys. Mad people always hitting their line. Like, ugh. Like, I can't. I can't keep up. Like, ugh. 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 Date somebody mixy. He be at all the parties. You know, all the events. He like a party promoter, bitch. Like, it's weird. And then you don't know who's his friend and who's trying to fuck him. It's a lot. To date somebody who's mixy. Mixy guys really even. I feel like they're really ever in a relationship. Like. I feel like a mixy dude. When they get into a relationship. They're done being mixy type shit. Like they're like I'm done with this lifestyle. I found me a girlfriend. Like. like I feel like mixy dudes stay single. Like you really meet a mixy dude. That has a girlfriend. Or oh, shit he probably a cheater. Who knows. I don't know. But you rarely. Like, they're usually mad mixy and they've been single for dumb long. Dumb long. Then when they get a girlfriend, they finally settle down. Like, they're like, I'm done with this club and like, I'm done with this shit. Like, and it be like that. Like, cause you like, y'all already found my girl. Like, when I'm in the club, I'm mad boy. I want to be with my significant other. Like, but you rarely meet one in a relationship. And I feel like it's mad hard to date somebody mixy. Like, you gotta be built for that. Maybe you, I feel like maybe you gotta be mixy yourself. Uh-uh, that's too much. That's too much friends. Too much people. Ugh. Please, stop. I don't know. That's a weird spectrum. A weird spectrum. Um... I mean, pros, he's just mixy. We don't know if he's smashing all these. I feel like, like I said, I feel like for the most part, they're usually single. And they probably do get mad pussy or whatever. And they probably got something. Be careful, honey. Mixy guys. You gotta watch they ass. Okay? Protect yourself. No shade to the mixy man. I'm just saying. It might. You might. Go get tested. Okay. The last but not least, the clingy guy. And this could be clingy is, there's different types of clingy. Because you got possessive clingy and that's toxic, that's domestic violence energy that that's giving me. And then you got really clingy, like he's just always up under you. Like I, you know those type of girls who got a boyfriend, like he'll dead go to a girl's night out. like. That type of girl. I don't know if it's the girl's fault or the guy's fault. But she's the type of girl that will bring her boyfriend everywhere. To me, he's clingy. Like, he doesn't mind me up until her. Like, he's just super duper clingy. Like, me personally, I'm not interested in that. No. I need my time. Like, I want to be able to chill with my girls and go out. Or my family. Or, of course, you could come sometimes if it's a type of event where you're included where they're like oh yeah bring your boo bring your dude but like those type of dudes that's mad clingy they feel the need to always constantly be up under you Ugh, that's borderline toxic that's giving me domestic violence vibes like why you gotta be all up under me like i cannot breathe can i breathe please sometimes i'm clingy even i'm not clingy like with my man like he'll watch tv in the room sometimes i watch tv in the room i don't watch what the fuck you watching then sometimes i'm really clingy and i'll be like 
all over him, all his face. We watching the same show, watching the same movie. Like, I want to be in your face. I want to be up under you. Like, I'm on that type of wave right now today. But for me, personally, a clingy dude, I think clingy people in general are scary people. So, I, I think anybody who's, like, super duper clingy scares the fuck out of me. Um, yeah. Like... So today, a guy who's clingy, some girls like that because they thrive with attention and just love somebody who's going to constantly, you know, just be on them and under them. Sometimes I like attention. Like, I want it ever so often, but not constantly. You know what I'm saying? Like, where he's just like, everything you do, he want to do. Sometimes I'm like that, though. Like, I go to the supermarket and I'll be like, let me come with me to the supermarket. Like, you know, but then sometimes I'll go alone. So I don't know. But a clingy guy is a guy who's going to go and do every single thing with you. Like, literally. Like, he's so fucking clingy. Like, I wonder do clingy guys have friends. Probably not. The clingy guy probably not really. Like, he probably got, like, one good friend. But even when you go to his, his one good friend house, bitch, you got to go to everybody going. We all going, bitch. I'm clingy. I need to be up under you, touching you all the time. I need to see you. That's crazy. It's clingy and... Possessive basically the same thing because that's what I'm thinking like a clingy, a clingy person is possessive at this Like I feel like clingy was a cute word for possessive because I feel like you like, like that's literally what the fuck that shit is Like clingy is basically a cute ass word for possessive to me because like you can't be clingy and not be possessive like I feel like you can't Separate the two like it's virtually impossible to me like Shit is not cute I think a little separation is healthy. I think, oh, uh, clingy, no pros. The only, okay, let me see if I can find a pro. What a clingy do? <laughs> Maybe, like, the pro would be, like, clingy? I'm not interested. I mean, I guess the pro would be, like, he just, like, loves you. He likes to touch you and be up under you. I don't know. Like, it's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I I personally find clingy people scary, so I, I, I probably shouldn't even put this on the list, but the clingy guy was the last guy, and he needed to be at the bottom of the list, and that is the episode, so I did something a little different, something very light, very fun. Um, why, I, I don't know why I came up with this for the season. I was like, I need to talk about something relationship, and I wanted to do something that was like straightforward relationship wise relationship driven and i hope you guys enjoyed it and yeah make sure you like comment subscribe and if you're streaming make sure you give it five stars leave a comment and i will see you guys next week and next week we're gonna do this but we're gonna be talking about women and, and you know what even though I, I i don't date women i know them i've met them all and we're going to jump into it. So make sure you come back next week to hear. Let me make sure I say it right. Different type of women and how to deal with them. See you guys next week.